Welcome to Alpha Centurion. I'm your host, Alpha. Uh, we are going over the Council of Trent. This is going to be the first, the second, and the third session. Um, just a little disclaimer, uh, once again, because some people forget, this is not a religious channel. And yes, I am Catholic, and I am covering Catholic issues right now. But I am just as likely to have a video up about The Witcher or about Nietzsche as I am about um, religion and theology. So session one was on, hold on, let me look, December the 13th, 1545. Um, and it's something of a dud. Uh, there's only one real big consensus, I guess. Um, and it's something that they're just kind of affirming, they're kind of affirming stuff that's already been decided on in previous councils. Um, partially this is because not everyone has shown up yet. So I don't know how many legates were there. That's what they're called, legates. Um, but basically the representatives of the church hadn't arrived. So here's what they came up with. They came up with that the Trinity was undivided, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go ahead, all you atheists out there, try and square that paradox. Then the second thing that they decided on was that they should wait until the festivals, until the holidays were over, and that then they should do their first real session. And lastly, they agreed that there should be a celebration, a celebration to celebrate the fact that they've had this first meeting. That's it. That's kind of, that's kind of all of session one. Not really a lot to say there. Let's go on to the next one. Session two, or the second session, is actually has a lot more going on. So this is going to be on January the 7th, 1546. Basically, the second session is kind of deciding the rules of the, the rules of play for the attendance of the ongoing session, so the ongoing council. I don't know if they had a deadline yet and when it would finish or if they even had a, a clue of how many sessions this would take, right? It doesn't play very well. Um, I can see where Protestants then and Protestants now, so I guess the followers of Luther and Calvin at that time and Protestants now, when they read this, would be very insulted and, and, and find it very hypocritical. It sounds like they're saying, while we're here, we have to follow these rules because we're being watched. Um, it just doesn't come off very well. But let's go over what these rules were, right? Rule number one was to amend themselves of evil and sins. So don't do anything evil while you're attending the council. Uh, to walk in fear of the Lord. Uh, three, to not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I think you've got to spell it out, right? Um, four, to pray daily and more often, which just makes it sound like they weren't praying at all. Uh, five, to confess more often. Let's see. Uh, six, to receive the sacrament of the Eucharist. And seven, to actually attend a church, which that one, when I read it in, in its uh, translated form, just, eesh, man, that's just, that's... It just makes it sound like they weren't, like you had a bunch of priests who didn't want to do their job, right? Eight, uh, to follow the, to follow each of the Ten Commandments so far as one is able. So like if you got to break one of the Ten Commandments, I guess you still, you still got to do it, right? Um, uh, and then um, nine is to desire peace and unity. So yeah, I, I, I know, I know, I know. It doesn't come off well. But if you look at the intent, the intent here is to say, okay, inwardly we're being pious, but we need to be extra pious and we need to show the world we're being pious because right now they're looking. So anyone who has any inclination, let's get that out of the way. Let's just spell it out and let the world know that our rules are tight. Our rules are straight. Our rules are really straightforward and they're clean cut. And, and so that way they can't even, they can't even look at us and, and think that we're being impious, right? That's what they think's coming across when they make these rules, but the opposite is being said because the, the people are accusing them of doing these kind of things. 
they're accusing them of not really uh, believing in the sacraments in full. They're accusing them of not actually doing their jobs. They're accusing them of not being pious, of, of being greedy, of, of doing this as a business and not as something that's spiritual. So, yeah. Okay, and then there's one more that I, I, I should note here, which is that if you are of the sacramental, the sorry, if you are the, if you are of the sacerdotal order, that then you are to actually do your job and fulfill your duties you had already sworn to perform. By the way, if you hear a sound, that's my cat uh, right behind me. Uh, the second session is a little petty and a little tone deaf. So I've worked in, in businesses. I've been a, a, a waiter. Was I a waiter? I was a waiter. Um, I've been a... Um, I've been a dishwasher. Um, I've worked at a magazine before. Um, and I've worked at a uh, oil hauling business uh, in, in management in, in the, the office part of that job. And uh, I can tell you, I've been in companies where middle management only makes you follow the rules when upper management is coming to town. And they'll make you dress in the correct uniform and they'll make you actually punch in on time and punch out on time and uh, take your lunches at a certain time and make you follow all the rules. But as soon as the, but with the understanding that as soon as upper management leaves, they'll go back to doing jello shots uh, in the lunchroom. They'll go back to the all-star who's also happens to be a cad, you know, they'll bell him out of jail. <laughs> so they'll help him out as soon as upper management disappears, right? So yeah, so like, that's just what it sounds like. It sounds really tone deaf. I mean, the Protestants and the Eastern Orthodox are accusing the Latin Rite Catholics of being greedy, of being lustful, of being impious, and in general, just being immoral. And so, you know, it doesn't look good where you're like, okay, well, right now we're not going to do any of that stuff, you know? I understand. Hey, you're going to set the rules. You got to put all the, the, the little stipulations in there. You got to set all the rules. Very basic. I get it. But it's very tone deaf to the situation. You could have worded it differently. Um, but hey. anyway, continuing on. So this is the third session. This is going to be on February the 4th, 1546. It's not the most heavy one either. Uh, here they decide that since there's not enough legates yet, people still haven't really shown up, that they decide to postpone or to do the next session and just move on to the next session, right? And just to wait for more legates to arrive, which is, you know, kind of disappointing. Um, but, they're, but they come up with a plan. And this plan is like, what... What exactly are we going to do with these with this council? What exactly is the goal here? And the goal is really simple: to basically to deal with the heresies, to uh, overcome the heretics, and to reform the morality and remove sin from the church. To reform the morality of the priest and bishops and uh, even the laity of the church, as well as remove the sin from the church that may have been accruing over the years to overcome the heretics and get them out of the church, whether they be monks or bishops or priests or deacons, just get the heretics out, get the people who are doing sins and, and you know, doing the wrong thing under the title of priest, just get them out. And then also to reform the faithful. So to even get the faithful along for the ride and, and get them to recommit to being more pious and to being more righteous and to doing more good deeds, basically, right? And to do less evil, less evil acts. Then they reiterate the creed and reaffirm it, and then they plan for the next session. And once they schedule the next session, that's it. That's, that's pretty much the first three sessions, first, second, and third session of the Council of Trent. I know the first one and the third one really didn't seem to add much, but they did reiterate and they did reaffirm the creed and they, re they did reaffirm the Trinity. So that's, you know, those are big steps. And mind you, I've read ahead, so it does get way more interesting. We do get into sanctification. We do get into the, the canonical 
canonical issues dealing with the Bible, like well, we'll get into scripture and all that. It is coming, but in the first three sessions, we don't get there. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, just remember that this channel uh, is all over the place. It has a lot of secular material. So I'm just simply reading through Trent and giving you my notes. Uh, I will be doing other supplementals. I will be reading through the 95 Thesis, which I already posted post uh, video one of that installment one. I will be going through the Papal Bull on this one. And I will be doing other books as well. So um, I hope you're enjoying. I hope you're watching. Uh, have a good night. Bye. Peace. And for those who liked my previous content from way back in the day, there is a channel out there with martial arts and weightlifting if you can find it. All right. Um, let's continue on.